right, joining us here on Real Agriculture now, we have Daryl Busby of uh, the Tri-County Steer Carcass Futurity down in, in Iowa. You're formerly with Iowa State University as well, Daryl? Yes, I spent 34 years at Iowa State University as an area livestock specialist, and then as we were reorganized, I ended up being a beef specialist in southwest Iowa. So you're up here in, uh, in western Canada talking about grading, both quality and, uh, and yield grading, and how... Uh, how this this does pay for uh, for the producer at the feedlot level, and even if you go down to the the cow calf. Level. Yes, that's that's right, Kellen. If you go back and look at what consumers are willing to pay for, and again, this would be U.S. Um, data, but I, I don't think there's any different in what uh, the Canadians desire. Uh, I know there's a certified Angus beef program now in Canada. Highest quality beef in both Canadian and U.S. grading system is prime. And there's a $25 per hundred weight premium for prime cattle, uh, which uh, is is a considerable reward for producing high quality cattle. And what what you see then is consumers are paying more at the restaurant, at the uh, dinner table for high quality beef. Packers are paying more to feedlots that produce high quality beef. And I think most feedlots are out there trying to find feeders calf sources that are high quality calves uh, and stuff. So again, I think the message to the uh, Manitoba or all of Canada cow calf producers is there's a strong reward system from the consumer clear back to the cow calf producer to produce high quality uh, beef and stuff. Um, I, I think the other thing that always comes to my mind is somebody says, well, I want higher quality beef. Well, first, were they willing to pay for it? And the answer to the consu- from the consumer is, yes, we are. And then secondly, well, how much more does that cost us to produce? Uh, do, do, is, if, are we going to spend $200 more to produce a product we're getting $150 for? Well, financially, that doesn't work. Uh, but in this case, what we found from two different analysis sets, we did at two different economic times uh, when I was with Iowa State, is it doesn't cost anymore to produce high-quality beef. The high-quality carcasses come from cattle that are healthier. They have less health treatments in the feedlot. They're cattle that are calmer. They're cattle then that are also gain faster. And I think that's a little bit of the surprise. Uh, my animal science training was that the, the high gaining cattle were just putting down lean tissue and not that much fat. But uh, marbling seems to uh, respond to proper nutrition and late gestation and early lactation of that calf. Then it also responds to less health problems during the preconditioning phase. And then in the feedlot, the faster gaining cattle do great better. So, so those all add up to being positive for all of us. Yeah, so most of the characteristics that the cow-calf producer wants to see are, are also beneficial for, for marbling, for, for quality, you're saying? Th- that's right. That's right. And, and I think it's a... I look at qual- producing quality beef as a reward to all segments of the industry to do, to do the right thing. To give good nutrition to that cow good nutrition of the calf, a good health management program, uh, treat the cattle, uh, you know, with low-stress handling. Those are all things that add up at the end to produce a product that the consumer is willing to pay for. So it, it's kind of a, a win-win-win situation up and down the, the segments of the industry. Do we sometimes run into complications, though, where uh, the next step in the supply chain might not give clear signals in, or in incentives oh. to, to, to yeah. put value into those things? Yeah, and, th- and that's why for the last 33 years I've promoted retained ownership. That's the truly clear signal. Mm-hmm. You know, if you retain ownership, you're then suddenly responsible, financially responsible, for the health care that you gave those kids, you're for the, how they were handled in terms of disposition, the genetics that you went out and bought, you're suddenly fully responsible for it. You, you, you know, you're guaranteeing them to work or you're not going to make money retaining ownership. And our data says that about 11 years out of 14, you'll make money retaining ownership. So there is a reward system. And so we find cow people that are, have done all this and say, you know, I think somebody else is taking my rewards. 
I'm just going to go ahead and, and take the risk. I'm going to retain ownership, and I'll see what I have. And about 30% of the people are really pleasantly surprised. I mean, we're talking jump up and down happy that I, I was doing all the things. I'm making more money. Then there's about 55, maybe 60% that are like, well, I'm good in this area, but geez, I didn't know my cattle were really wild. I didn't know that my cattle, uh, my vaccination program wasn't that good. Uh, I thought my cattle would grade better than that, or I thought my cattle would gain better. They find something out that here's my strengths, here's my weaknesses, how do I make improvement on that? And then I would tell you there's 10% of the people think this is the worst idea in the world to retain ownership. You know, they, they wish they never would have done it and they're never going to try it again. But but I think the the 30% that are just like, I have done all the things that are necessary. Uh, I, I paid attention and, and did my homework and I go out and do things right. Those are the people that are really happy when they retain ownership. And by doing that, you get a, I guess, a clearer signal than what you're, if you're selling to a feedlot, they yeah. might say you have the wrong color or, or some other characteristic. Right. But May, may not actually be the, the uh, fact at, at the end of the yeah. chain? Yeah, the true signal is, is whether you make money or not or added profit to your operation. That's that, That's about as clear a signal as you'll get. Not a, You don't get any warmer fuzzies. It's in black and white. And, and then the other thing we do and, and uh, is, is we calculate profit on each animal. And the other thing that's happened in the last few years with the volatility in prices and prices going up, we see this huge range between the bottom one-sixth and the top one-sixth. It used to be in the $200 range in profit just between those two groups. Now we're up to almost $400. So, so we see a, a lot more incentive for producing really high-quality cattle. All right.